Huh. I don't even know how this works. This thing is crazy. What is this? Huh. These silly creatures. They think of everything. Wow. What a cool, bleepy, bloopy, clicky thing. My Uncle Matt never told me about this. Oh, everyone's seen nice things. Hi. Hi there. It's me, Gobo. Ah, uh, don't know what this is or what kind of weird outer space thing this is, but it's pretty cool. Ah, uh, wow. Oh, this is nuts. Wait till Red and Moki and Wembley and Boober hear about this. Uh, can, can everybody, can you see me? I guess so. Oh, oh, oh there you are. Hi, all. Hi. This is cool. Gobo. Hey, everyone. Thank you all for listening. I'm going to take care of this, Gobo. He'll be back later. Hey, everyone. Thanks for joining. <laughs> yes. Someone suggested Gobo backs up from the camera, so he's working on that. He's never seen a, 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 a phone like this before. That's a big deal. Hey, everyone, for joining. Oh, wow. Hi from Trinidad. Hello. Hi, everybody. I'm just going to let a few more folks join, and then we'll... We'll start and send me your questions. I want to answer your questions. This is our very first Fraggle Rock Instagram Live. We're going to be doing some more of these. Um, it's super exciting. We wanted to connect with all of you out there because this second season has been so exciting and your reactions have been so great. So we're just we're really happy you're all here. Hey, y'all. <laughs> well, Gobo will be my best friend, the Space Cowboy 88. Gobo is everybody's best friend. So there you go. Uh, I got a question from uh, Tori Jane Benson, who wants to know what my favorite song is that I performed uh, in Fraggle Rock, Back to the Rock. And that is a very, very, very difficult question to answer because all of our songs are so wonderful, as you guys know, and the writing on all of them is so great. I, I really, really loved doing Follow Me from the first season. That's always been my favorite Fraggle Rock song one of my favorite Fraggle Rock songs and getting a chance to sing that again was just like a dream come true with everybody. So yeah. Um, let's see. You guys have some amazing questions here. Uh, my Muppet Memories wants to know, do I have any favorite episodes from the original Fraggle Rock series? Yes. Um, my One of my favorites is A Friend in Need. Um, I used to love that episode. I really, really love uh, Manny's Land of Carpets. I love Detective Red. And I really love the last episode, Change of Address, for sure. Uh, Kate C2, C2026 wants to know, what's it like to work with Karen Prell? Working with Karen Prell is the greatest thing in the world. Um, she, Red was my favorite Fraggle growing up as a kid. I was obsessed with Red Fraggle. And so much of my puppetry came from trying to imitate what Karen did. And so to get to work with her and now call her a good friend is like, the greatest thing I've ever gotten to do. She's one of my biggest heroes. So it's super cool. And she's the most generous, fun performer to work with. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I'm so glad so many of you were watching the new show. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, Aaron Bonar wants to know, will we ever see a Fraggle Rock movie? Maybe. You never know. Anything's possible if you guys... If you guys show enough love to the show, it's anything's possible. So keep watching and keep spreading the word. Uh, Space Cowboy wants to know, what's it like taking up, uh, oh, performing one of Jerry's characters? Um, the greatest honor ever. I mean, Jerry Nelson is a legend and I got to work with him for a few years on Sesame Street and got to know him a bit. And I, you know, for all puppeteers, Jerry Nelson's a hero. And to get the chance to continue on something that he put so much of his own heart and soul into. And now I get to do the same thing is such an honor. And I just try, I try to think of him all the time when I'm performing Gobo and try to keep his heart and his, his essence in there. Um, let's see. Yeah. Oh, Richard Michael Gomez. Hi Richard wants to know, uh, any information we can give about the live show, the live Fraggle Rock show. Uh, well, I can tell you that it's, it's in development. It's, uh, in the process. Um, It'll be really fun because, you know, it'll be the Fraggles in walk around uh, outfits 
and then the doozers and you'll kind of get a taste of everybody. Everybody's going to be there. Um, and it's going to be the very first time. A lot of people don't know this. Fraggle Rock never has done a live show before. So this will be the very first time. So um, I'm excited. I'm really excited that it'll be coming to a city near you and you'll get a chance to see the Fraggles live. Um, let's see. You guys are asking such good questions. Um, hi, Eva from Canada. Uh, oh, this is good. Uh, Zebro's Blooms, I think, I was mentioning um, showing different sides of the Fraggles this season. That was a big thing for us. We really wanted to show, um, we called it like the shadow sides of the characters when we were in the writer's room. Um, like the sides of the characters that maybe like they don't always show to everybody else. So like, you know, everyone knows that Red's athletic and she's outgoing, but like who is Red? you know, when she's by herself, you know, like she can also be very sensitive and very insecure. And like Gobo is the leader and he's an explorer and that's kind of what he puts out there, but also like he can be stubborn. And what does he do when he doesn't have the answer? So we really wanted to kind of show more sides of the characters this year. Um, lots of love for Barry Blueberry. That makes me happy. <laughs> uh, let's see. Oh, can you see Gobo? Of course, he's right here. Hi, just hanging out, listening. Thanks all, thanks all silly creatures for talking to my, my best bud here. Yeah, I'm hanging out over here by the Fraggle Hole. Let's see. Uh, the Real Duckbird wants to know, how did we get Adam Lambert for the voice of the great Glitterini? And what was it like working with him? And did I get all the glitter out of my hair? I think I got all those questions. Oh my gosh, we were so excited to get Adam Lambert because we all love him as a performer. And you know now he's the head of Queen. He's singing all those great classic Queen songs. Um, and we wanted someone who is just owns who they are and is authentic into who they are. And, um, what's great is we didn't know Adam Lambert is a massive Fraggle Rock fan. He loves Fraggle Rock. He grew up with the original too. So he was like super excited to be asked and he was so much fun to work with. And he, he put all those different like little, um, personality pieces in the great glitterini like the the funny you know different voices in the beginning when he's the chef and he's the maid and stuff like that uh, he had a blast doing that and uh he was really excited to get to meet the puppet in person i'm sure you guys saw the video he loved how it moved and that it was so furry and lit up and he was amazing um and i'm so glad all of you have enjoyed watching that episode that episode means a lot to me too um Let's see. Oh, there's a question about where is my, where's Gobo's favorite place that Uncle Matt has gone to? Oh, I don't know. That's a hard question. I remember in the original series, I always, I loved seeing him whenever he would like get thrown into like the water, like the ocean or when he was like surfing or I think that's always really fun. Um, this season, it was really cool that we got to take him to Mexico. We got to take him to South Korea. And that was really, really cool to be able to shoot in both of those places with him. Um, let's see. You guys are awesome with these questions. I love so many of you are quoting um, uh, Free and High. That's such an incredible song. Uh, oh, Alex Wild 09, was the whistle bug's whistle cry a reference to Ted Lasso? I'll have to ask Dan Garza did the whistle bug. I'll have to ask him if he did that on purpose. I don't know. That's a great question. I know that we like did a bunch of different reads on that line. Some are like squeaky and high and some are super low. We thought the super low was was pretty funny. Uh, let's see. Will we ever see Side Bottom again? Uh, it's funny you say that. We talked a lot about Side Bottom and I think there's a, there's a mutual love for Side Bottom amongst the writers in the writer's room. So I think there's a good chance he could come back in further, in future seasons. Um, but his like, his crazy energy was was definitely the inspiration for a lot of episode nine, which is the the uh, time travel one, the over and over again uh, episode. Um, let's see. Oh, will we see more Fraggle bloopers? Uh, there might be. You might have earned some more Fraggle bloopers. We, we released the season one Fraggle bloopers, but we have not put out the season two. So there was a good chance that, that you'll see some more of those. They're a lot of fun. We have We have so much fun making the show. So uh, it made us happy to share that with you guys. Uh, my heart is a pineapple. What was the experience of directing the episode I'm Pogi? Um, that was a dream come true. It was uh, a very special episode to me and so many of us on the show. 
Um, it was really hard. It was a lot of glitter, as someone asked earlier, <laughs> and it was a lot of long nights, but it was, um, it was just so important to get it right. And I think that the performances that Jordan Lockhart and Kanye Chan and, and Ben Roche, who performed the puppeteering for um, uh, The Great Glitterini and Dan Garza as Junior and everybody in that episode, I just thought it was such a, a be- I'm really proud of it. I'm really, really proud of it. Um, Oh, uh, Kastins88, I hope I said that right, asked, uh, how was the White House Easter egg roll? It was amazing. We got to go to the White House. We got to meet the president and the first lady. We got to sing uh, the Fraggle Rock song and teach everyone there at the White House Easter egg roll, the, um, the, the official Fraggle Rock pledge, if you want to be an honorary Fraggle. Um, it was just amazing. It was an amazing, amazing day. And to be on the White House lawn with thousands of families and people recognizing the Fraggles and getting to meet them in person. It was just, it was the coolest thing ever. It really was. It was definitely like a, a, a once in a lifetime kind of thing for me. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, I thank you. I'm so happy to hear so many of you say that um, the Pokey uh, episode, uh, I'm Pokey, made you feel seen. That's exactly what it was about. So that makes me super, super happy. Um, Oh, Zebra's Blooms. Are any Fraggles harder or more difficult? Uh, Icy Joe is a giant puppet. I'm sure you've seen some of the behind the scenes and she takes a minimum of three people to perform. Uh, Karen Prell, of course, is is the voice and main manipulator, but she's a heavy puppet because she's so much bigger than the other Fraggles. And so uh, Andrew Cooper usually is the one kind of holding her up. Sometimes Ben Duroche performs the actual puppet if it's a really physical thing. It, it, there's someone on our hands, someone on our feet, someone on our tail. So she's probably the hardest puppet to do, I would say. Um, I love how many of you ask. Oh, the ink spots. Talk about the ink spots. Sock drawer. Talk about the ink spot. The ink spots. The ink spots. I actually, they're my favorite thing to do on the show. I love when I can sneak in the back and do an ink spot. Uh, there are these little puppets that are so expressive. They're teeny. They were built for the original. They were created for the original series. And we were, that was like one of the first things we talked about. <laughs> we were like, what puppets do we want to bring back? We're like, we have to bring back the ink spots. They're so much fun. Uh, let's see. Um, Mr. Joshua Sussman asks, what song from the original that hasn't been remade yet would you be most interested in doing a new version? Ooh, that's a good one. Hmm. You know what? I love a song called, um, I think the actual title is The Me I Wanna Be. Gobo sings it in the original series. Just can't be the me I wanna be. I love that song. And we actually tried to get it into an episode this year and it didn't quite work, but I wanna bring it back. Um... Let's see. The James Nobles, uh, James Nobles, excuse me. If Icy Joe is a heavy puppet, which ones are some of the more easy ones to manipulate? Um, honestly, the Fraggles themselves are, are probably the easiest to do only because they're so beautifully made. I mean, Gobo is, he's the most beautifully made puppet. He's got this incredibly flexible mouth. And they're just, there's, you know, they don't have, Gobo, for example, doesn't have any moving eyes or any mechanisms that does anything special, but he's just so beautifully built and he's light and he moves easily and all the expressions I want to get come out of him. Um, so I think the Fraggles are, are just, you know, overall, they're, they're so perfectly designed. Um, and, and, you know, we, I, I've talked about this before, but we, they have these great rubbery, palettes that let us do all these different expressions so we can do his like annoyed expression or his like surprise expression or his curled in lip expression there's just a little ooh he gets a good ooh so i love that i love the, i love these puppets so much pineapple allen i hope i said that right how do fraggle moving eyes work great question i used to be obsessed with that when i was a kid um both of them, Moki and Wembley, have eyes. Uh, Moki's eyelids move, and Wembley has uh, eyes that can roll. Um, and in Moki's case, there's a servo motor inside of the eyes that makes the eyelids move. And in the original series, they would press a little button, and the button would send a signal to the servo and just open it wide. And they can only kind of go wide or half-lidded. But for the reboot, we wanted more variety. So the brilliant Tom Newby, who's a genius builder, uh, came in and built this amazing servo control for Donna Kimball, who plays Moki, that she holds on her rod and she moves it and it makes the eyes. Now she can land the eyes wherever she wants them to be. And I love that. Wembley also has a servo motor inside of his eyeballs and it makes them spin. And 
Jordan has a little controller also on his rod that lets that happen. So it's all motorized, um, but it's such a great effect. It works so well. Um, let's see. Mark Ashley Pattison asked, if I could meet Jim Henson, um, have I imagined what I'd say to him? Yes. I think about that all the time. I keep this picture here over my desk. Uh, so I always, I always had Jim right there. And I think I would ask, I mean, there's so many things I would ask him, but I think the number one thing I would ask him would be, could you ever have imagined that something you created in many cases, 40, 50, 60 years ago, would have the power and the legacy that it's had and that it would make such an impact on the world. And, and we think about that all the time is like, you know, that we're carrying on that legacy. So I think I'd want to ask him about that. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, there's so many questions. Ah, uh, Henson Family Hub wants to know, do I have a favorite guest star from season two? I had, every guest star was amazing. That's impossible to answer. That's like, like choosing your kids. Like every single person was amazing to work with. Um, Catherine O'Hara, Irina DeBose, Divi Diggs, Brett Goldstein, Espa. Um, it was just Adam Lambert. It was just, it was the greatest group we could have ever asked for. So cool. Um, let's see. Someone asked, and I missed, and I'm so sorry, I don't know the name, so forgive me for not saying your name, but someone asked, how do we choose the topics for each episode? Um, that's a great question. We, every year at the beginning of the season, we meet in the writer's room and we talk about what are the things we feel like are, are important to address? What are the subjects that are important to address? And in some cases, right, like this season, there were two big kind of overarching themes. Um, but then throughout the season, we want to hit certain certain things. So, you know, whatever sometimes hits personally for a writer, um, if it's something we see in the news, you know, like the repeaty birds is definitely, you know, a, a response to, you know, how irresponsible it can be to use social media in the wrong way, which is something that kids are dealing with now that they certainly didn't deal with in the original series. So that just kind of shows like how we try to be aware of like what kids are currently dealing with. Um, but yeah, we have, we have a lot of big talks about that and talk to advisors. We have a lot of talks with, with advisors of how to get that across to kids. Um, my Muppet Memories, with a lot of the Doozer stuff being 3D printed, what would Jim Henson have thought about a 3D printer? I think he would have loved it. Jim loved technology. He loved being on the forefront of new technology. You could see that in his work through the years. And the fact that now something that you used to, you used to hand sculpt, it would take hours and hours to do, the fact that they can literally design something in that computer and print it out instantly, it, it made production so much easier for the doozers in that way. Um, let's see. Let's see. Magic be with you. I loved hearing more of a Broadway vibe from some of the songs in the second season. Uh, how much was Broadway uh, influence? Uh, very much so. I mean, all kinds of music influences Fraggle Rock. That's what's so great about Fraggle music, right? There's blues, there's rock, there's there's uh, country. Um, but there's a lot of Broadway talent behind this version of the show, you know? And so we all, it's funny, um, Radishes versus Strawberries, which I know is a song a lot of you love. It's one of my favorites. Originally, it was going to be like a West Side Story, like Jets, and the sharks kind of face off song. And we tried that, it didn't quite work. And then that's when the idea came to do like kind of a more of a queen rock opera kind of number. But there's a lot of times Broadway comes in, be a queen, Amy Garcia, the brilliant Amy Garcia as Marjorie the Trash Sheep and Ma Gorg singing with herself. Um, there's definitely some Broadway behind that. It's like an Ethel Mermany kind of like disco number. <laughs> Let's see, um, great. We're going to take a few more questions and then, believe it or not, we're at the end of our first Instagram Live. But we're going to be back next week, same time. Let's see. Uh, I'm going to look for a fun question here. Mm. Let's see. You can't eat strawberries or radishes without thinking about the song. I love that. Um, let's see. Oh, what do we do with the puppets and set when we're not filming? Uh, they go into storage. The set goes into storage. They actually break the set down like a giant jigsaw puzzle and they like figure out what piece goes with what. I watched them do this, it was amazing. And then they put it into a giant storage area uh, for next season. And then the puppets, some of them, uh, most of them get sent back to New York. Some get sent here to California and then they get refurbished. And then we get chances like this to use them and do fun things with them. Um, all right, one more question. Let's see. 
the last question. And by the way, keep your questions coming. And if we don't answer them this week, I'll be back next week with next week's special guest, who I can't tell you who it is yet, but it's definitely someone you want to be here for. Um, they're definitely somebody you're going to have a lot of questions for and has never done this before. So I would definitely be here next next week for our very special guest. Um, but keep your questions coming. Even if we don't answer them today, we will we will try to get to them. Um, <laughs> Jen Vane, who's one of our amazing puppeteers on the show, wants to know where Esther is. Who her? It's, that's her background, Fraggle. Esther is sleeping in her box somewhere. Uh, let's see. Oh, all right. Last question. This one's fun. Will we see Gobo's Radish Ball episode again? If you haven't watched episode nine yet, the Fraggles all got dressed up in their their finest, which was so much fun for the build the builders to make their like dressy outfits. Um, Karen Prell loves that outfit for Red. I was obsessed. Gobo had this like cape and top hat that was so cute, little vest, I think. And um, I was obsessed with it. We wore them to the Emmys with the Fraggles. So I hope we'll get a chance to wear them again. Maybe if we get nominated for Emmys next year, we'll wear them there. Um, anyway, this has been so much fun, you guys. I have had the best time ever talking with all of you. Thank you for your brilliant questions. Thank you for being here. Um, you know, I'm sure you guys know this, but you can always watch Fraggle Rock, the original series on Apple TV+, Plus. but you can now watch both seasons of Fraggle Rock, Back to the Rock on Apple TV+. Plus. The second season is streaming now. Please go watch it. Please tell all your friends and your family to watch it. That's how we can do more seasons and do more Fraggle fun. You guys have been the most supportive fans ever. And um, I say this as someone who grew up as a fan of the original. We do it for you guys because we truly, truly want to keep the Fraggle magic alive. So thank all of you. Thank you all so much for your support. And, uh, and we'll see you next week. Same time, same place right here on Instagram Live uh, for even more Fraggle fun with a very special guest. You're going to want to be here. I'm telling you. I'll see you guys soon. Thanks so much, everybody. Bye-bye. Now, how do we turn this thing off? I don't know. Do you just press here? Now you got to... Oh, right there.